Okay, I'd like to show some more uh, header flow testing as a companion piece to the uh, first video I did. Uh, it was brought up that uh, maybe my testing on the stock exhaust manifolds wasn't really valid because I didn't have the head pipe installed. So I'm going to do some uh, more comparison testing here. I've got a 4 into 2 into 1 uh, manifold that's pretty popular on the Fiat's. And I've, I've done the testing without the head pipe on it. And you can only test one cylinder at a time this way because the two, two halves of the manifold are split. But what I've found, because of the design, the way the manifold is uh, connected with a runner and the alternate runner, it's easier for the exhaust to flow straight back into the cylinder rather than making the bend to go down a manifold into the head pipe. So, uh, with that being said, we put the head pipe on it and we'll do some testing and uh, see what the results are. So here we go. I'm going to turn the, the vacuum on. Uh, we've got it so it's blowing air rather than sucking. So let's see what happens. So we've got airflow into the into the number four cylinder. The alternate cylinder would be the number one cylinder. As you can see, there's no suction. It's not trying to pull that in. Put your hand over it. You can feel slight pressure. So the other cylinders, the alternate cylinders, are linked through the head pipe where it joins down here into what would be a collector. So here, we've got no suction. This one, we've got no suction. So this four into two into one design really isn't effective at all. If we use our airflow meter, uh, if you may, may remember from the first video, this shows airflow in kilograms per hour. It's got a red needle there that would show airflow through the port. If the needle runs up anywhere from the one to 30, that shows how much airflow we've got. If the needle stays at the bottom or goes into the negative, that would show pressure. So, go here. As you can see, the needle disappears, it's buried. So that means we have slight pressure there. On this cylinder, we have very slight suction. And on this cylinder, again, we have pressure. So this factory four into two into one manifold really doesn't work. It's similar to the, uh, the other popular later model manifold. The only difference really is it's got six studs instead of four. But if you look at the design of the manifold, it's the same way. It's easier for the airflow to go straight back across rather than make a bend and go out the exit. So even though the collector on this is supposed to scavenge, it really doesn't work. Now, I've already showed you how a well-designed header flows. I'm going to show you a header that was modified and how much effect the collector design has on the header. Customer cut off our collector that normally uses a slip joint and it's about four inches long so that he could put a flange on it. And it's got a bolt-in flange and as you can see the collector now really is gone. The four tubes join together but there really is no collector uh, mounted on it. So let's blow some air down in it and see what happens. You've seen how well this header flows when the collector is in place. So, we've got air blowing down through there. We've got uh, about five kilograms per hour here. About the same here. Very little, very little flow on that one. Only about one kilogram per hour. If we recall from the previous video we did, this same header design with the collector on it flowed uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 kilograms per hour depending on airflow. So cutting that collector off has had a pretty disastrous effect on how well this header is going to work. So that's my comparison. Uh, stock manifold with a head pipe and uh, modified header with a, a collector that's uh, been made ineffective. Thanks for watching.